Hi everyone, and welcome back to my laziest series yet. So, as we discussed last week, assuming you made it through, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. I uh, messed up the audio. Um, the world is populated by a couple different races. I wanted to add a few more of those. First and foremost, there's this one other Pokemon I like. Jangmo? Yeah. I love this dude. I love this dude and this dude. So we're just going to plug that down here. So I like the idea of these dudes being used as mounts. You know, things that you ride around on. Um, the idea of them is just, you know, theoretically cool because they are big bipedal lizards. That makes, you know, perfect sense to me. And of course, they wouldn't be this, but this is the idea I'm working off of. Now, some of you may notice that in the thumbnail, we feature uh, elves with guns. Now, I've decided to uh, take a few stances on that. For one, um, I didn't want to have a traditional world, obviously, because, you know... I rarely do. And so one of my, you know, thought processes, here is the thumbnail for those who, you know, can't look at it right now. One of my thought processes was I'm going to mix and match. So a few of my inspirations, because it is okay to have inspirations, is uh, for this one, Generations 3 and 6 of Pokemon, Jack and Daxter, which is a hybrid of fantasy world building and modern. Um... And then I may have mentioned these already, but uh, Final Fantasy X or X, if you like. And then uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender. FFX for its uh, Islander stuff and Avatar for its weird hybrid animals. Because I was also thinking about having uh, small wolves that act like house cats. But let's talk about these elves some more. So they have a specific type of dress and, you know, war paint. They wear this blue paint on themselves and this handprint. Um, they have a finger removed. That's why this handprint only has four fingers. And they all carry guns. So they go through, you know, they go from Nolan to the inhospitable lands. They all take separate paths and they open old buildings and the such like. And they just go on a little quest. Um, I was thinking that they would willfully submit to amnesic uh, treatments so they don't know who they are. And then they go try to, you know, clear out the inhospitable lands. It's a suicide mission, but it has like a religious undertone for them. So technology here was advanced enough that you could have machine guns. Uh, the spike on the end is a bit inspired from the brute weaponry in Halo. But for the most part, these are all pretty standard, you know, Earth-level submachine guns. Now, the elves here obviously have a wide bevy of hairstyles. I've decided that that would uh, be how someone could tell your class. Now, I, of course, haven't exactly decided what I want to do with this world, besides just use it as an example. But um, something that you can do is you can have the character arc already planned out no matter who takes it. Uh, a good example of this is in Star Wars, the Jedi already have kind of a preset character arc because, oh man, what if they fall to the dark side? What if they go back to the light, you know? Because nearly every Sith has the backstory of was a Jedi, fell to the dark side, etc., etc. And uh, almost every Jedi has at least one story where they grapple with the dark side. Similar with paladins in uh, Dungeons and Dragons, because falling is a game mechanic, most paladins have to be tempted to fall in some way at least once. Well, they should be. They don't have to be. So with these guys, I've decided to name them Titans. They uh, all go on their little quests to go see the spirit lands, see the inhospitable lands, you know? to examine what exactly is going on with that whole area. Um, 
As for what exactly they would do there, that's up to me, the writer, or possibly you, the writer. But when you have essentially a, a religious war, a crusade, in an area that doesn't really have a combatant, they more have a problem, you know, an environment, then that definitely changes the dynamic. It becomes almost like a Horizon Zero Dawn, you know? Where people are just worshipping things from the past that we don't really understand. And in keeping with how I'm just combining a bunch of different things that I like, I'm also going to add uh, robots in here. Small human-sized robots, kind of like a Metal Slug. And for those who don't know, uh, Metal Slug is a video game. I'll show you an example. Let me take this down. Shaboom. Yeah, here we go. So they're pretty small. You know, a human fits in this. And uh, while recently watching an LP of Titanfall 2, I was reminded of how much I actually really like smaller mecha. Like uh, Lagan of Gurren Lagan fame. And so I just really like the idea of you know, small little mecha that everyone rides around in. I, of course, also think it's cool if they mecha are sapient. And uh, good friends with everyone. So then that presents to you a choice of race as well. Let's assume that it's like a role-playing game. You can have a wolf cat, you can have a big old lizard, you can have an elf with a gun. You can have a mech. Um... And then everyone would present their choice of class differently. So, depending on how your hair is cut as, you know, a war elf. I believe they're actually called Lifus. Yeah. Lifus with a, a Edrov bloodline. Because what if the technology is all activated genetically? So then you would need people with the proper bloodline to go activate it. And then other Lifus could just have a whatever, you know? But yeah, so... Livis with an edge of bloodline, all wearing their hair like this, present their class in that specific way. Whereas a lizard would probably have different sets of saddles and bags on them to show their choice of class. You have these elves going from boat with either by themselves or with a small party of lizards, robots, other elves, etc. to the inhospitable lands and just kind of exploring. Um, there's a few other things I wanted to add to the world. Oh, yeah. So whenever they go on their uh, on their trips, they all take a new path so that no one has a, uh, you know, no one runs into any droughts of ammunition or technology because presumably they leave a, a path of used stuff in their wake. So the Titans would have to go on a new path so they don't, run into that so they can find new things. I also wanted to mention that um, I had an idea with the uh, comets of this world, the cosmology rather. Um, but I had the idea of all the water's fresh just so I don't have to think about salt water. Because I think that's more fun that way. Just removing something so familiar and just saying, no, that doesn't exist. You know? Oh yeah, there's no salt water. And then a large chunk of the water is actually technically from space. I know you could argue that all things are from space, but a lot of the, you know, deposits up here or here actually originate um, from comets. But yeah, that's a, uh, that's a smaller world just kind of fluffed out and fleshed out there. I uh, hope that this is some way helped you. I understand that, you know, sometimes I'm just kind of spitballing ideas for my own sake, but... Even if I'm just kind of talking to myself here, I want to show that it is sometimes, yeah, that easy. You can just make a, you know, silly idea and expand it into a big world. So, yeah, um, I've been Alfred. This has been World Building. Um, thank you guys for coming. I'll see you next week.